I have a challenge for you. A challenge that many are unwilling to accept. Obtain every hybrid flower possible in Animal Crossing New Horizons. This challenge will result in showing you exactly how to breed flowers in Animal Crossing. Are you willing to accept the challenge? Oh, sorry, I was a little distracted. What were you saying? So here's how the video is laid out. I've got the time links in the description to help save your time. That's good enough reason to like this video, right? First off, we'll cover the various ways to get flowers or flower seeds. After that, I'll show you an easy technique for setting up your flowers. And then, I'll show you all the hybrid flowers. And part of that will be showing you the types of combinations that I use to cross-pollinate to get the hybrid flowers. And then next up will be the tips that I wish I knew that you didn't know that I knew that you didn't know. So this tutorial will show you how to breed flowers in Animal Crossing, but let's cover the basics of how you get started. You can get flower seeds from Nook's Cranny, or from Leaf the sloth looking guy that visits your island periodically. You can also get different types of flowers from visiting mystery islands. And then lastly, you can trade with other players online. I've actually covered that in this video here. Cross-pollination and flower placement. So we've got a, this, you know, the standard red, white, and yellow. Here is how we would set up our flowers. Uh, we want to set them up in a checkerboard style pattern. The flower, the red flower here and the white flower right here are actually cross-pollinating. And then the white flower and this red flower here are cross-pollinating. We're shooting for a pink flower right here, so if the pink mum would either spawn in here it would spawn in here or here. And then as you set up your entire flower garden, you can do these flowers in fives. So for example, if you wanted to place a red mum right here and then down here as well, you'd have basically a little station set up to spawn in pink mums and they would spawn in, you know, in one of these open checkerboard spots right, right here and right here. Okay guys, I've just realized how difficult this is going to be. I'm a little teary right now, but I just wanted to stop really quick and give you this vlog because I want you to know the real truth about how to breed flowers in Animal Crossing. So in order to get a red organic flower, you would cross-pollinate with a white and a orange rose. And so, for example, if I logged in the next day and, and these guys have produced a red rose, organic red, then I would actually want to take this organic red and separate it out and put it way away so that I know that it's not a standard red because the you know it looks identical to a standard red so we want to make sure that we take this this red and, and, and kind of space it out maybe even mark it uh, with some sort of pattern on the ground then you would put those organic reds in a checkerboard pattern then eventually these organic reds will produce a blue rose <laughs> It's been days and nothing is blooming. All right, all joking aside, leave me a comment below and let me know which flower was the most difficult flower for you to grow. For me, I couldn't get the purple windflower to spawn for anything. All right, so starting off, let's talk about the roses first. And so something that you'll notice with every flower, uh, for the most of, for the most part, is that you'll have a red, white, and a yellow as the base colors, except for a couple of the other ones. And uh, we'll see that here in just a second. So starting out with the roses, we've got a red, white, and yellow as the base right here on the bottom. And then in order to get the pink rose, you would combine the red and white rose. Uh, and if you set those up in a checkered board pattern, pattern, you have a chance or a uh, possibility to get a pink rose to spawn in. Uh, next up is the orange rose, uh, very nice. And that would, uh, you know, if you set it up in a checkered board pattern, then the red and the yellow rose combined would uh, have, a, have a chance to spawn in an orange rose. Next up is going to be the black rose. And, uh, and, and in order to get a black rose, it's two of the uh, just normal red roses combined has a chance to spawn in a black rose. For the purple rose, it's two white roses combined and that will produce a purple rose. And next up is another red rose, uh, but this red rose is a little bit different because it is not uh, spawned into the game with seeds. It's actually spawned into the game with a white rose and a yellow rose. 
And I've called this one, uh, I call this one an organic rose or an organic flower. Uh, you know, just meaning that it has spawned in from another flower, just not from seeds. And I've kind of marked this um, so that I didn't forget to tell you guys about this one because in order, you know, the significance of, of this red organic flower uh, is actually the blue uh, rose. So in order to get a blue rose, you have to have two of the organic red roses. So as you can imagine, it's going to take quite a while to get two organics and then uh, it's going to take quite a while to get the blue rose because it, it took me uh, quite a while to, to do this. And then lastly but not least, uh, you know, once you get your, your black roses down here with your two normal reds, then you can start watering them with the, uh, the golden uh, watering can. And I've got one right here. And so basically what you do is you would set these up in a checkerboard pattern once again and you would water them. And I'll run over here real quick and show you what I've got. I've got quite a little uh, setup here. But you would just basically water these black roses in a, in a checkerboard pattern and then you have a chance to spawn in some golden roses. And once you do that, once you have the golden watering can and once you start uh, watering these every day, the, the gold roses uh, actually spawn in very quickly. As a matter of fact, they've spawned in more so than the blues have for, for me. Alright, next up is we're going to cover the pansies because the pansies are something, uh, they have more of these organic flowers that I want to talk to you about. So, let's start here. So again, we've got the red, white, and yellow as the base colors down here. And then one up is the, uh, is the orange pansy. Now I know it kind of looks, it doesn't really look orange, maybe a little bit. Uh, I guess the little circle within the red is uh, signifying orange. And in order to get that is, is the red and the yellow combined. In order to get the blue pansy, you would combine uh, two white pansies together, you know, set them up in a checkerboard, and then you have a chance to spawn in a blue pansy. Uh, these this one right here is the organic red that I was telling you about. So in order to get an organic red for the pansy uh, species, you'd have to do the red, just a regular red flower and a regular blue flower. Uh, the same here for the organic orange. In order to get an organic orange, you would do just a regular orange with a regular uh, blue pansy. And you have uh, an opportunity to get these organic flowers to spot in. And then once you have either a two or three organic oranges or two or three organic reds, you would combine those in a checkerboard pattern, of course, and then you, you have the opportunity to uh, get the purple pansy right here. All right, let's roll over here to the lilies. So what we've got here, again, uh, as I said before, it's the red, white, and yellow is the base. And then you've got the pink, which, you know, you can kind of tell that the, the pink is being spawned with the red and white as it did with the rose over here. So the red and white is, is the pink. The red and yellow spawns in an orange lily. And then the two just normal reds will spawn in a black lily. And then you're kind of getting the hang of it. It's uh, red and white and yellow for the cosmos as the base. And then in order to get the pink, it's the red and white together. In order to get the orange, I combined the red and the yellow together. And then once I got enough oranges spawned in, I was able to produce a red, uh, or excuse me, a black cosmos uh, with two oranges. Moving on to the mums, once again we've got the red, white, yellow as the base. Pink is going to be red and white combined. Uh, the purple is going to be uh, two whites combined. And then in order to get the, the only green flower in the game, actually, you combine two purples and you will get a green mum. So moving on to the wind flowers. Um, so this is one of them that is a little off because it doesn't have an, a yellow in this in this uh, species. So you've got a red, white, and orange as the base colors. Then in order to get the pink uh, uh, wind flower, you're going to combine the, the red and the orange. In order to get the blue, you would combine two whites. And then I've, I've marked this one here because this one's a little bit different. In order for me, for me to get the purple, I actually had to... Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. And, and there's uh, I'll put some links in the description below about different guides that, that I use to do this. But I had to get two uh, organic pinks right here and uh, in order to produce this purple one because I, I tried many different ones. There was uh, I tried a couple, several several times I've tried the blues together. I couldn't get the blues to work. Uh, so I ended up going the route of another guide, uh, which was two organic pinks, and that was able to get me the purple 
uh, wind flower. All right, Hyanth is next. So let's take a look at the base. We've got the typical red, white, yellow. The pink, once again, is red and white. The orange, again, is the red and yellow combined. The blue is two whites. And then in order to get the purple, it's two oranges together. So as you can ima imagine, it's going to take you a little bit of time to get you some, some oranges here uh, to set up in a checkerboard pattern. But once you do, you can spot in the purples uh, pretty easily. And then next up is the uh, tulips. So we've got red, white, and yellow as the base. Then we've got the pretty little pink tulips here, and that's the red and, and the white combined. In order to do the orange, you've got the red and the yellows to combine. And then once you combine two uh, just regular reds together, it will eventually spawn in a black tulip, which looks pretty cool. And then uh, the one of the more rare flowers is the purple tulip, which is two oranges combined uh, in a checkerboard pattern, and that will give you the purple tulip. So you want to water your flowers every day. You don't need to water them if it rains, unless you're trying to produce the golden rose. Regardless, watering every day is a must. If you time travel, then skip back and forth between a rainy day and another day. Each time that you log into the rainy day, come out of your house, and then the game will register that your flowers are watered. Just make sure that you save and exit every time. Have friends come to your island and water your flowers. They will shine gold after five friends have watered them, and it increases the breed rate by five times the norm. I'm providing a link down in the description of this video of a crossbreeding picture guide in case you need to take it with you. Take a look at one of my other Animal Crossing how-to videos that are on the screen right now. And also don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe.